Well, I had started my professional career in uh, computer vision and pattern recognition. I had done some work in medical image analysis at Duke University. Uh, and I was doing medical imaging, um, robotic vision and uh, sorts of things for a long time. I think a lot of us have that end goal of the Star Trek system, yeah. right? So uh, we're moving towards it. Predicting big changes is a, uh, is a low percentage business to be in. <laughs> so. It's a very simple problem, you know, how do people find information? Uh, but it's universal and uh, it's just as interesting now as it was then. Of course now there's all these commercial applications everywhere you look. But then uh, I'd say majority of people, there was a split between information scientists and computer science who, uh, scientists who are interested in the problem. Um, information retrieval is one of the first applications that computer scientists looked at in the 50s and 60s, in the 50s, let's say. Uh, but then it sort of uh, fell out by the way a little bit when databases became very popular. Uh, but the essence of the problem, which is uh, given huge amounts of unstructured information, how do you assist people in finding what they're looking for, uh, is just a really fascinating problem and it's as deep as you want to make it. You can keep going layer, peeling away layer after layer to uh, try and solve the problem. You never quite get there and we've still got a long way to go even with the uh, ubiquity of web search and other types of search applications these days. Uh, in relation to the Technical Achievement Award, uh, the award is in relation to my, my contributions to solving scheduling and, and, and load balancing problems uh, in distributed computing systems. Uh, these uh, problems arise in a variety of setups and scenarios uh, and normally um, uh, resource management protocols uh, in distributed systems uh, appear in the operating system or appeal, appear in, 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 in the middleware uh, and they're part and parcel of any uh, computer environment and more so in the case of high performance and distributed computing systems. Uh, and the Technical Achievement Award basically recognizes my, my achievements or, or my work in this area for the last uh, 10, 10 plus, uh, plus years. So uh, the work I'm uh, honored to win this award for I think began in uh, February 2002. Um, I just uh, started work in computer security. I was interested in um, the internet of, uh, of things and even back then. Um, and uh, one of the things that uh, came about in uh, some uh, collaborative discussions I had with uh, colleagues like uh, Ron Rivest was that um, the physical security of, uh, of uh, unsupervised and disseminated devices was a serious concern. Um, and uh, since I had a hardware background, um, I became particularly interested in that problem. And uh, I was discussing with my students as to how we could uh, protect your hardware secrets, uh, uh, secrets stored in hardware, and how we could uh, authenticate uh, these uh, devices, where we uh, realized that um, uh, we could uh, uh, not just identify um, individual um, uh, in integrated circuits, chips if you will, uh, because of manufacturing variation across these different uh, devices, but we could also authenticate them. Well, the field of biometrics has been around for a long time, decades. It sort of jumped to national prominence after 9-11 in the United States when a lot of money was redirected towards national security sorts of issues. Can we tell who's crossing the border? Can we tell who's in the country and not in the country? Uh, can we get driver's licenses that really do prove who the person is? Can we verify identity at border crossings? All of that sort of thing. Uh, my, my own areas of work have been in face recognition, particularly uh, using uh, infrared, three-dimensional images, as well as normal images, and for the last uh, six, seven, eight years in iris recognition, which is uh, the idea that you can use the image of your eye and take the texture pattern of the iris, which is the textured part outside the pupil, 
and generate from that a unique identifier. So in principle, by the theory of iris recognition, every one of us is carrying around two different unique identifiers. Unique to the, to the uh, almost to the population of the world or something like that, if you had both eyes being used at the same time. Now there's a long way between theory and practical application, and that's what some of the research has been about, sort of quantifying some of the assumptions, questioning some of the assumptions, and coming up with new algorithms to do things. Uh, specifically, the work uh, in relation to, to, to scheduling and load balancing, uh, over the last 20 plus years, uh, just to give a bit of background, uh, I started uh, at investigating problems related to real-time systems. Uh, at the time, uh, there was a need uh, to really uh, distribute uh, the type of computations needed to control uh, robotic arms and so on, uh, and doing these compute-intensive uh, com you know, type of computations like for kinematics, dynamics, and, and controller design. Um, and then, of course, you know, afterwards that led me to try to look at, 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 uh, at other problems or, or more diverse problems in distributed computing systems. It's certainly one aspect of big data actually came out of search. After all, a lot of the uh, interest in large-scale analysis of and, and text data mining uh, came out of the things that Google and other companies were doing with the huge amounts of data they were collecting, uh, both on the data side, meaning web pages, billions and billions of web pages of all different types of shapes and sizes, and of course, huge amounts of user data, queries and other related information about location, etc., which they started using and mining and to get more effectively at the information that people were looking for. So a lot of this whole idea of, well, let's collect huge amounts of information and use it to improve a user's experience or to understand what's going on in a particular environment really came out of the search uh, application and information retrieval in general. So I guess I would consider we've been doing big data for a long time. Uh, you know, every human being is unique because uh, we have different genomes. Uh, well, every uh, integrated circuit that's uh, ever been fabricated, even though it, it's been, uh, circuits have been fabricated using the same mask, are unique because of manufacturing variation. And uh, I guess that was really the genesis of the work. A lot of things happened. I worked on it for uh, o over a decade. And uh, obviously, I'm uh, thrilled and honored to win the award. Well, I'm, I'm lucky enough uh, to have a job that I really enjoy. There are lots of unanswered questions and sometimes it seems like each question that we answer generates more new unanswered questions than it resolves. Um, we're still in a phase where we're, we're testing some of the basic assumptions of uh, iris recognition. If you want to push it to the scale where you could identify everyone in the country or everyone in the world over their lifetime, how would, a, how would the technology at the core of a system like that be created to be reliable in the long run? Uh, so there's, there's just more fun questions coming up. The IEEE Computer Society, I mean the IEEE at large has been very instrumental uh, in, in helping me throughout my career. From the time I was an undergraduate student joining the university, uh, IEEE, you know, student chapter, and of course uh, later on, uh, you know, getting involved with, with, with more activities and after, of course, uh, you know, graduate studies, the relationship with IEEE, uh, you know, kind of got tighter and stronger, and of course, uh, through activities through the IEEE Computer Society, more specifically, as my work, I mean, um, the body of my work is, is very much sits uh, at the heart or the core of, of, of the activities of the IEEE Computer Society. The students. That's number one, uh, working with graduate students in particular. Uh, you know, most of what I've accomplished has been working through working with very smart graduate students, often smarter than me. Um, and uh, you know, I've, I'm, I think I'm uh, right now. I'm working with my 35th PhD student, and so, and of course, a lot of other master's students and things like that. And uh, they're just incredible. A uh, bunch of people, and uh, it's uh, just very rewarding and to work with. And that's one of the special things about being an academic is being able to work with great graduate students. Mm -hmm.